there. So that's where you're hiding. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I make my videos, which cameras I use. Usually you see me, but in this video, you're gonna see you and how you look like to me. Something many of you probably don't know is that my hobby was photography and filmmaking way before I did ham radio. Then I started doing SOTA, I started making a few videos and I got tired of it. Mostly because I didn't have a good camera, I didn't have a good microphone and I didn't really think that the stuff I did was any good. And uh, when I look back at it, of course it's horrible. But then again, it was fun and this was 2018 thereabouts. And one thing that it actually did kickstart was a lot of interest in SOTA and portable operations around in Norway. But a few others and me, we started making videos, we started writing about it. And uh, then it's spun up to be a really big thing right now. Uh, and that is interesting. Then over to 2022, Morten Lima Bravo Zero Foxtrot India was doing a lot of YouTube videos and he kind of uh, pushed me back into making videos again. And I've done it ever since. I really love it. Now I'm also into live streaming. Every Sunday we do the European Ham Radio Show and that is a lot of fun. And uh, then I do different videos from activations and most of my videos are non-technical. It's basically operations showing off the amazing scenery around here and just enjoying making videos. That's my main context about this channel. And that's something you can do in a lot of ways. My way is showing how it is to operate outdoors, showing some of the fun parts, showing some of the bad parts and showing some of the amazing scenery you can see around. But that was enough talking. Let's go over to looking at the cameras. So just to get this uh, out of the way, all of this is camera gear I bought for my own money and no sponsorships or anything like that. The camera you're seeing in front of you there is a Canon R8 and this is my main camera when I'm filming nowadays. It is a full frame camera, it's quite lightweight, it has some limited functionality compared to some of the bigger Canon cameras and it is a really nice camera. It can do 4K video but for me that is not really interesting. And the main reason for that is that 4K video that generates a lot of data. I think we're talking from this camera about five gigabytes per minute. And uh, usually on an activation I film like half an hour to 45 minutes with this camera alone. And that takes a lot of disk space. So that means that I actually have to delete uh, a lot of that uh, film afterwards or the video material. And I really do like keeping the raw images. Therefore I'm filming in 1080p and uh, 50 frames per second. And I'm doing that uh, cropped. You can see the lens on here. This is a 16 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's a Canon lens and it's really nice. For 4K it's really wide. But this camera allows you to crop down and use uh, in-camera stabilization. So that means that you get some really nice and stable images at the same time as you get uh, a cropped image, which is more like 36 uh, millimeter. One disadvantage about the Canon is that it's quite heavy and it's also expensive and it's not really weatherproof. So for heavy activations like heavy winter hikes or really rainy days, this stays at home. And I switch over to using this one. This is a Sony ZV-1. It's a video blogger camera. And uh, it's a really simple, lightweight thing. It's not cheap by any means, but it's a lot cheaper than a Canon. And this one, it works really well for like simpler stuff. It does require daylight. It can do some nighttime stuff. And for photography, it's utter rubbish. Uh, at least if you want to do, for example, flowers or portraits or something like that. But for video and uh, doing, for example, an event, a hand convention or something like that, it's really nice. So this camera is also the one I use for my European ham radio show streams. It's uh, connected to the computer via HDMI into an Elgato cam link. And that's a really simple way to get a really good web camera. Both of these cameras, both the Canon and the Sony, can connect via USB and work as really, really good webcams that way as well. 
but I don't really like doing that. I prefer having external USB just for power. In front of me here you see one of the funnier cameras and this is an Insta360 uh, version 3 I believe. And this is the one I use when you see me from above, like you did in the opening scene here. And uh, it's a really small camera, it's lightweight and it has two domed uh, lenses. So it does a full 360 sphere image. This is not a good camera when it comes to video quality. And I can imagine, at least in this light, it's gonna be really bad and uh, grainy. But it has its moment and uh, it does create some really interesting uh, scenery that I'll be showing you now. Also, it's fully waterproof, so you can actually put it outdoors, you can put it uh, underwater and so on. So uh, that way it's a fun camera to use. When it comes to sound, there you can see two options here. On top of the can, you can see a small Röde mic. It's not Rode, it's Röde. And uh, this is a wireless mic system. And the other end is uh, on me here. I have two of these. And this is one of the few things in my camera gear that I would recommend that you don't get if you're going to activate outdoors. And basically the Röde mic, or at least receiver, that is not really fond of activating outdoors in minus 15 degrees with a lot of humidity. The buttons on mine are broken uh, after a quite short time. But then again, I broke them using them in a really bad environment they were not made for. Otherwise though, it is really nice and all of the audio you get today is from the Rode mic. On this one, I have a small Boyu mic. Uh, it's uh, just a small directional microphone with a uh, dead cat on it or a windsock and uh, this is a quite simple uh, solution it's uh, cheap and uh, it's somewhat good but it does pick up a lot more noise from the environment so it's probably gonna pick up like the waterfall that's over that direction a lot better than the Röde mic does one big advantage with that is that it doesn't require batteries, it just runs off the camera. So it works in any case, while the other one requires USB charging, and since mine is partially broken, I can't use it for more than the battery lasts, which is a few hours, so a decently long SOTA activation. The next step is the tripods. And as you can see, this uh, Insta360 is mounted on an Insta360 tripod. And this is a one and a half meter rod. It's the shortest one. They also make a three meter one, which is really nice. And these ones are fixed in some really nice software, so they actually disappear from the video. So if you can't have a drone, if you can't afford one, or if you can't fly one where you are, this can be a quite nice uh, alternative if you need some sort of uh, new camera angle on it. So uh, it is well worth trying for its use. The big tripod that you saw the can on in the start of the video is an Enduro tripod. This is roughly 10 years old, it's not uh, produced anymore and it's quite heavy. And I don't really bring it to many activations, only when I can have a car really close by or thereabouts. I think it's about two and a half kilos with this head on it, so it's a lot of extra weight. It is really rugged though, and in a video earlier this year, I actually used this as an antenna mast out on the ice. So uh, it's a nice thing, and you can also extend the legs a lot on this one. The last one is the one you saw me hold the ZV-1 in, and uh, that is a Gorilla Pod. Gorilla Pods are interesting, but they're also really weak. Uh, all of the ones I've had, I've had three of them, have broken at some time after a year or two of use and then they're basically trash and this one is one of those. One frequently forgotten camera is your cell phone. This is something most people have with them at all times in any case and it's usually more than good enough for what you want to do. And I've actually filmed the entire activations with this one when I forgot my camera back in the car uh, and uh, I do a lot of small scenes with it where the big cameras would be too bulky or maybe they're in the bottom of the backpack and, uh, and I'm too lazy to get them out. And uh, then I grab my cell phone, I do a little filming on that one and um, yeah, nobody's uh, the wiser. And it does provide some really nice video quality, at least in the correct lighting conditions and so on. Because this is a tiny camera lens, it's a tiny sensor, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be anything like the Canon here, but it's 
more than good enough. The last bit of camera gear I'm going to show you are my two drones. I got one DJI 3 Mini Pro and one DJI Mavic 3 Classic. Both of them really nice drones and I've done a lot of footage with them over the last year. I have different uses for this and that's why I have two of them. The Mini 3, it's a really lightweight drone. It's a sub 250 gram drone. It does have to be registered here in Norway. Absolutely every camera drone has to be that. So if you're coming for a visit, please register your drone and get insurance. That's an absolute requirement and it gets insanely expensive if you don't have that. The Mavic 3 Classic, that is a much sturdier drone. It can handle a lot more wind. It has an amazing Hasselblad camera and uh, it's basically a much more stable camera platform. It is, however, a lot heavier. So this kit with an extra battery and the controller, that's way over one and a half kilo. So it's a lot of weight to carry on a SOTA hike or something else like that. So I brought the drones to give me some bird's eye perspective and to be able to use them as a camera I can place anywhere. And that's also how I use them. Drones, for me, they're just a mobile tripod. Something that can track you around and something you ju can just place in 3D space no matter where you want. And they are really amazing for it. Of course, these drones, they're something I don't fly in POTA reservations. But I do film POTAs, but that is always from outside of the area, just to make sure that I stay compliant with all of the rules in there. So that was a quick look into how I make my videos. I hope it was interesting for you, and I look forward to showing you more videos in the future. Seven trees.